Hi, Tea Timers. Um, welcome to all our new subscribers and and um, hello, all my old faithful cozy tea timers. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Um, let's see. So today, oh, oh, I forgot to tell you what I'm drinking. <laughs> so today I'm drinking a Darjeeling tea um, with just a little bit of um, milk, but no sugar. And, um, and now I'll drink it. Ah, it's good. I like, I, I really, I really like my Darjeeling tea. Let's see now. Okay. Uh, Miriam Ashley Studio. All caught up. Do you ever have honey in your tea? Yes, I have had honey in my tea. Um, I, 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 I don't really like it with my um, Irish breakfast or my English breakfast or my afternoon blend or Darjeeling or um, any any of those ones. Um, but I do like it with mint tea. I, I, I especially like honey with uh, Moroccan mint tea. Um, which I, I love because I love the whole ritual of how they would do the tea and they would soak the tea leaves and then they would have the honey and then how they would uh, pour the pour the thing from really high up higher 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 so go ch -ch 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 -ch, and it would aerate so yes I have had honey in those teas and sometimes now since we're in um, in you know isolation or well self isolation because of the stinky old virus, um, I have a mint plant outside in a pot, and so every once in a while I'll clip off bits of the fresh mint leaves and and stalks, and I put it in my teapot, and then I add a little bit of honey and I stew it for a long long time so that it tastes like the Moroccan mint tea, and then um, it like I do it I've done it a couple times in the evening, and then I have my husband he puts up the candles over the fireplace and. Um, you put on the little fireplace, it's just flipping a switch. We wouldn't make a fire because it's too warm and, and we don't want to add any more smoke. <laughs> oh yeah, yo, it's been smoky here. But anyway, and so then what I would do is then when it was ready, then I would pour it really, I'd start to have the cups down and I'd put a tray underneath it because um, you could have splashes. And then I'd pour it higher, 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 just like we're in a fancy Moroccan restaurant. So then, and then we sit on the sofa and um, we have a little meal music playing and we sip our, our tea like that and we pretend that we're somewhere else so we're kind of just traveling in in our imagination so yes I have had honey in my tea um, but mostly I drink mostly I mean I used to drink sugar in my tea my grandmother she used to do um, she would drink her tea I remember when I first started drinking tea we'd go to my grandmother's house and she would have her tea just very 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 light so you could basically just take a tea bag and waft it over the top Lipton's tea she drank waft it over the top and that would be strong enough for her she liked it so clear that you could see the bottom of your teacup very clearly and she would have a teaspoon of sugar and I remember she told us that she would um, when she was a little girl when she lived in Finland they would drink their tea through a sugar cube and I remember thinking, oh my goodness, to be so fancy to have sugar cubes to just have at your will to drink a cup of tea through. And she would, uh, they would hold the sugar cube in their mouth and then they'd drink the tea and it would go around the sugar cube and it would sweeten the tea as it went down. And um, we thought that was really fancy. I remember when I was young, I was around 10, my stepfather had got a job uh, cleaning the ferries at night and he would bring me and then he would go into the captain's quarters and he had his typewriter and he would type away with two fingers because he didn't know how to type like fancy he would type with two fingers because he was trying to write a novel and smoke 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 and I would go and I would clean the ferry and I would clean the um, I would use the, I would empty all the ashtrays and and all the garbage cans and drag the garbage bags down to by the by the front of the ferry where we had take it off when we left and I would wash out all the ashtrays because in those days you could smoke on the ferries you smoked on planes and um, I would clean them all all polish them up and then I would clean the um, clean off the sinks and the toilets and scrub all the toilets and then I would go 
to, um, I got to use the buffer. So it's a big, big, big machine, or it was really big when I was little, because I was only like 10 or 11. And I would hold it like this, and it would like that, and it would have this big brush that would swirl around, way down on the ground, and I'd hold it, and it had a really long cord, and I would go and I'd buff all the floors so that they were shiny, almost like glass, all throughout the ferry. And, um, and then, and then in the morning when his night shift was over, then, oh, and then after I finished, then, okay, that, so there was a point to all of this. After I finished, um, I felt a little guilty about this, but, but anyway, I did it anyway. I would go up to the, where they had the little kitchen for the crew, the, it was a little thing, and they had a coffee pot, and they had a, a box of sugar cubes, white sugar cubes. And as my treat, every, every time I finished, even though it was, I guess, a little bit stealing, I would take one sugar cube and then I would, I, that's my reward for doing all that work. And then I would suck it like a piece of candy until it was gone. And then I had my sleeping bag and I would lie on the floor on my sleeping bag and sleep until it was time, after I got the whole ferry clean, until it was time to go in the morning. And then in the morning, as the light was just coming up, um, my my stepdad had crab pots and he'd pull them up off the back of the ferry and we'd put them in the um, trunk of the car of the little Volkswagen bug and um, and we'd walk off the ferry and the other person who was coming on for the next shift would say hello and we'd say hello and we'd go and we'd drive away. So sugar cubes were um, something really, really fancy to me and so that my grandma there was allowed to have sugar cubes whenever she had a cup of tea. Oh my, that was so fancy. So, um, so yes, I, I, I used to do, um, sugar in my tea, but then, um, sometimes when you try to be, um, uh, healthy, I would do the honey, but now I don't do any, any sugar in my tea. Only once in a while, maybe a half a teaspoon for special occasions, because I'm trying to <clears throat> use a little less sugar because I'm not supposed to eat that much sugar. Um, okay, I'm not supposed to eat sugar. <laughs> but I try to balance it. So I try to monitor out my sugar with the thing. So if I'm going to have sugar, I don't want to waste it in my tea. I'll have it in a little spoonful of ice cream or I'll have it in one of my cookies or, or cupcakes that I make or, you know, things like that. Like, or a piece of candy if I'm going to have candy. So that's what I'm trying to save my things. Okay. Let me find another, I'll put this down. I'll answer one more question here. What do we have? Oh, it's upside down. Here we go. Okay, RM678. Hi again, Meg. Seeing as how it's currently Emmy night, I'm interested in what's your favorite memory of your former brother-in-law, Sam Simon. I just finished the documentary made about him during his later years and found him to be a fascinating human being. Well. Yes, my um, brother-in-law, um, he, he, he and Jen, okay, I always, I was a little nervous around him. He just seemed so competent and so knowledgeable and, and um, I, I, I was a little bit worried that maybe he, he didn't like me. He was an amazingly talented man. For those of you who don't know, uh, Sam Simon, he wrote all of, um, he wrote a lot of the, I was going to say, I can't, but I can't remember the name, Danny DeVito's dialogue in uh, Taxi. He wrote for Cheers. He, he created the um, Simpsons. He was the writer on the Simpsons, he created those characters. Um, so I, I was a little bit nervous around him. And um, I, I, I think we were a little, when Jen, Jen and Becky and I would get together, we were a little bit <laughs> noisy and overwhelming and he was an only child. So I think, you know, that, that he would usually, when we came over, when I came, he would, he would go hide in his room office <laughs> and work. And so I, I, I never know. He did one thing. I remember it was very sweet. We, I was living in the wilds of Canada in a little log cabin with Colin. And one day this package arrived, you know, down this dirt road and, and we had a creek by it. And, um, and in it was, he had sent the jackets he had had custom made jackets for David and Emily and I think Emily was around um five and David was three or maybe she was four and he was two but it, I think she was five 
and they were the cutest little Simpson jackets and they had the characters on the back and they had the little leather arms and he sent um, a bunch of the videos because I didn't have TV. So he sent the like little videos of, of the Simpsons. But the thing was, is my kids were little and when the Simpsons first came out, there's a lot of controversy about like, oh my goodness, you know, this is not appropriate. <laughs> so I saved all those, um, videos and and when they got older they were allowed to watch it but you know but they were allowed to wear the jackets and they were the envy of the kids at school because all the kids were allowed to watch those the, those shows and they had they wore their jackets really proudly until they outgrew it but another memory i have of i remember once jen called me when her and sam had first moved in and she's like oh no meg you come over quick and i came over and we had never had a dishwasher. We had never seen such a fancy thing. And she had, they didn't, she had run out of the, the dishwashing detergent. So she just used regular dishwashing liquid. Don't do that. If any of you <laughs> ever think to substitute, don't do it. There were bubbles pouring out of it and all over the floor. It was like a monster movie with all these bubbles, like boom, boom, boom. And she's like, what do we do? I said, we clean it up and we grab towels. We grabbed all the towels and we just mopped and mopped. And boy, that cycle went on forever. And the bubbles came out forever and ever and ever. But we got it all mopped up and we put the, then we put all the towels into the washing machine and, and washed them and dried them. And, and he never knew. <laughs> but there's one thing that I, I remember that, it might be an odd memory for somebody else, but it's a very cozy memory for me. I would, I had decided when I was um, 28, I'd finally got up my courage and I had not just asked, cause I'd asked for one before, but I, I was getting a divorce and I, we'd gone to marriage counseling and everything. And so I, I was gonna do that. And we were going to, we were gonna go to a mediator and um, I came to see Jen and I just told them that we were gonna do that. And Jen said, um, Meg, Sam wants to see you in his office. And I got really scared because I was like, oh, because I thought he was gonna, you know, um, I don't know. I, 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 felt, I mean, I felt bad I was getting divorced, but I had to do it. But anyway, I went in there and he always seems so much older than me, but he was only a couple years older and I was 28. So he couldn't have been more than 30, 31, I don't know. And he was behind his chair. He said, shut the door and I shut the door. And he, he, he told, he said, no, you, you probably aren't gonna wanna hear this. And he got a cigar and he cut off the edges very methodically and he put it in and he's leaning back in his chair. And then he let, he said, you need to get yourself a lawyer. He said, you know, you need to get yourself a lawyer and you need to be taken care of. And you know, I know that, you know, you, know, you, you had to, you know, pay off stuff now, but you know, he, his father, he's gonna be, you know, his father's in his nineties and you should make sure that your children are taken care of and that he's going to take care of your children. And, um, and, uh, it just moved me that he, he, he went out of his comfort zone to lecture me and try to get me to get a lawyer. I didn't get a lawyer and I, I, I probably should have, but I just wanted to get free. But, um, his, his gruff kindness, um, made me realize that he did care. And, um, and it, it, yeah, and, and it made me cry, <laughs> but it was crying out of like somebody, you know, you know, Jen and, 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 and Sam care about me and, and, uh, care about me enough to say uncomfortable truths, but I didn't take his advice. <laughs> so those are, it's weird, but that's one of my really, um, like, that was a real, that was real. Cause you know, he did that. I don't know. Anyway, that's all, <laughs> that's all, that's all I, um, and then I saw him, you know, um, I went, he did a radio show with Jen and, um, it's just nice when you get to grow and you get to see people and you all get older and older and older and, and, um, and, you know, he's passed away, but he was, he was a, what, he did many wonderful, remarkable things and, um, and he was such a blessing in my sister's life and, um, and the laughter that he gave people through his work. Bye. Oh, the most important memory I have is one that I've just got. 
You should see my sister's Instagram. She did an Instagram around two or three days ago about Sam, a memory about Sam winning his um, first Emmy. And it is so beautiful. It is so beautifully written and it just captures it all and the picture she included with it. So go to Jennifer Tilly's Instagram and scroll down until you get to that one and read, read the content she wrote. It's so beautiful. It really, really moved me. Oh, Oh, and another thing is we're doing the questions for um, Susan Elizabeth Phillips because uh, we didn't get to them last time. So we're doing it on Wednesday. So that's tomorrow at 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. But you can also see it on her FaceTime or on not FaceTime <laughs> on her. What's that called? Um, Facebook on her Facebook or you can do her YouTube channel at Susan Elizabeth Phillips any old time. So um, we're going to answer a bunch of questions. Okay, see you then.